first draft update. Did you want to move that? Okay, so it's going into close game. Moved. Bobby? Bobby? Yes, sir. You're okay with that? Yeah. Okay, second by Bob. All right, uh, Ramona Transit Electrification Project. You're on. No, Mr. Chair, point of order. Approval of minutes, September 21st. Is that correct? I just wanted to, I, I will in a sec. I just will you? Sec. Okay. There we go. All right, so we are going through a change order form here for the transit electrification project. So as you know, we hired Wood Consulting um, in 2021 to help us with the transit electrification modeling as well as selecting the final site for our transit facility and developing all the RFP documents for um, the procurement phase of that project. So the original amount was um, approved at 121,500 um, plus applicable taxes plus an additional 20,000 in contingency. Um, and it sort of outlines their primary tasks that were developed um, for that expenditure. At this point, there's a couple of items that have uh, that are not were not in the original scope of the contract for um, wood, which is now owned by WSP. So we have additional scope of work that we would like to um, approve through council in the amount of thirty three thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars plus taxes. Um, this will fit within our existing 2022-2023 operational budget for transit. And this would be for um, additional GHG modeling that's required for our ICIP application. It will be for the development of a diesel um, tender for bus procurement. And it will be for support during the tendering phase and the evaluation phase on all of our um, all of our procurement. So we didn't have that in the original scope of work that they would help us out with any questions that come from vendors as well as help us out with the final evaluation. So for those three tasks, they have quoted us um, 33,780. It's outlined in their quote on the attachment to the report and looking for um, approval from committee and then council to um, raise this PO for the additional work. Hey, any questions? Bobby, you okay with that? Yeah, no problem. Where is it? Oh, yeah, it's good. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so we have a, uh, you want to move that? I will move that. Bobby, you second it? Sure. Move that on. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Great. Ramona. So just um, for process, that goes to finance now and then to council? Yeah. yeah. Is it within your It's within the existing budget, but it is over 25000 I think if it's within your operational budget. It's 33000 you're looking for extra, right? Eh? On top of your existing budget is it new money? It's not new money. There's there's additional that money is a special projects fund, so there is money in the account that can be used oh, I for this. this was a new ask. Um but it is because it's over twenty five thousand, that's why it's coming to committee for, for approval. Yeah. So we can approve it here. I think it's it's more of a change order is what it is. Yep. No, you're right. It, it, you're so right. Yeah. so it doesn't need doesn't if, need if it's to. within no. your existing bucket of money. Yep. It doesn't necessarily right. have to go yeah. on, but Good. we have to come to committee so that the committee is aware of it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. No, I thought it was a new ask. No. Okay. Right. No. So it's within if it's within our budget. We did a review of the budget. There's room in there for this expenditure. So. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, just want to go back before we go to the next uh, next item to uh, approve the minutes of September 21. Right. Mover and second. Moved. Bobby. Sure. Thank second. You. Yeah.
All right, the switch program. We have a, a guest speaker right. in for the switch program. I'm just going to, uh, uh, yep. Chair Bernard, I'm just wondering if we could, uh, any business arising from the minute. Sure, yeah. I, I was just going to ask about F bus shelters. Um, yep. Uh, I think there's 10 coming. I'm, I'm just wondering on the amount and uh, is there a spot for them yet or, or is one going to each ward or do you have any idea? I think there is, uh, yeah, there, there is 10, and I'm reading that the budget, uh, 10, yeah, 10 leaning shelters. Uh, I'm not sure if there's uh, locations for all of them yet, but that would be discussed. Is there, is there a location to pick up for all 10, Ramona? I think what's in or the Jessica? budget is the leaning benches for in the shelter. So that was brought forward okay. by the... Um, Seniors Committee, Advisory Committee, that they wanted to see leaning benches in some of the oh, shelters. For ones that are in, for the shelters that are They're for built. shelters that already okay. exist. Okay. Did you hear that, Bob? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Sure. I can speak to that. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we have not received very many requests for new shelters. Uh, we've gotten one or two requests. They are much more affordable to buy in bulk. Yeah. So our conversations were about waiting until we had enough in the queue to warrant very expensive to buy one or two. Um, so I think a future discussion is about, like Councillor Drow mentioned, where, they, where are they needed, where do they go? It requires a bit of work on our part to look at where the gaps are and where the riders are that are standing out without a shelter. Um, we've not done that kind of analysis yet. Um, and we haven't formally put out a call for people to make requests for shelters. So right now we have one or two requests and that's it. Okay, so is there so plans right planned. now for expanding the routes anywhere? Say that again, sorry? Is there plans right now for expanding the transit routes? Um, there is uh, a letter to the, can I speak to the letter to the province? There's a letter to the province um, asking for additional funds, funds to expand our service. So depending on what comes out of that letter, we might be Expanded and transit routes. Shelters. Yeah, okay. Do you have a question? Mr. Chair, um, on the bus shelters, I think this was an issue raised by Councillor Tweel at that meeting of September 21st. Jessica, I attended a, an accessibility forum that was at UPEI, and it was about bus shelters did come up. And I don't know in other jurisdictions, I've never seen them, but are there shelters, bus shelters that are heated or provide some kind of shelter from the cold, especially for disabled users in wheelchairs? Are there any um, peer studies that would show that they are available? That is, provide, I know the shelters that we have now don't provide a lot of shelter from cold winds or snow, rain and so forth, but I think this gentleman disabled person was asking about uh, shelters being warmed or provided with some kind of heat source. Any yes, background on that? through you, Mr. Chair. So that's not something I have information no. on, but it's something we, our department could definitely look into. I don't know if Ramona wants to speak to her understanding of anything different, but one thing I will say that did come up uh, through the power outages um, during the hurricane was that some of the transit shelters were lit up when the power was out. And so the recommendation that we have some solar lighting in the transit shelters, which I think is a good idea. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Bobby, you okay? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the switch program presentation. We have uh, Brennan Kilfoyle. Yep. Yeah, right on, Brennan. Hi, yep, Brennan Kilfoyle here. I'm with Pace Atlantic CIC, and we're the third party that operates the switch program. Welcome. So thank you very much, and thanks for having me. Um, what I'm going to do is, oh, thank you very much. Um, click my own slides. Could I just, uh, point of order, Mr. Chair, um, this could be a conflict I never thought of. We did apply for the program, my wife and I. So does that put me in a conflict position? No, shouldn't. Yeah. Just want to no, clarify no. that. Didn't want to have that. I'll probably be applying too. Good. Great. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Ramona's in. Um, You're not getting anything anybody else can't get access to. So it's quite a hole in this chair. 
So as I said, I, I come bearing good news of uh, an update on the switch program in Charlottetown and elsewhere. And oh, let's see if I get our slides back. I'm going to take you through. I, I understand there's some new folks to this committee uh, since the 18 months since the switch program was launched. So I'm going to take us back in time a little bit into the present day into the success of the program where we are today. Uh, our new elected official is sick today. Oh, is that right? So okay. everyone else has been here. Yeah. I can fast forward. I yeah. I'm, can't be as fast as Ramona, but. Um, <laughs> so, you know, what you see on the screen, as I said, I'm Brennan Kilfoyle with Pace Atlantic CIC. We've been working with Charlottetown, as you know, and also with Stratford and with Wolfville, Nova Scotia to operate the SWITCH program, uh, among other uh, energy retrofit programs that we operate and help to develop uh, in the Maritimes. Um, so moving on. Uh, the SWITCH program, as a general recap, is an energy retrofit financing program uh, that uses PACE financing, which means loans are tied to the properties, and we offer 0% in Charlottetown right now. Uh, homeowners can borrow up to $40,000 for projects like solar installations, heat pumps, insulation, that type of thing, uh, or really en any energy upgrades. Yes? This entire phase of financing is from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. It's a 0% 20 20-year 20 loan that the switch program is taking advantage of. Sorry? The federal government. Yes, that's right. Correct. So in the switch program, we're able to offer residents 0% uh, financing, as just mentioned, over significant terms of, of 10 or 15 years, depending on the, the installation, and no upfront costs. So the first money out of residents' pockets is their first loan repayment for their solar installation or their heat, or their heat pump, which is great. Uh, it's a user pay model, which is significant. Folks that are participating in the program, as some, some of you know, pay a 5% admin fee, which means it's a user pay model. This is meant to be operating at zero cost to the municipality yourselves. Um, and, and, you know, in other words, you're not paying for your neighbor's project, your neighbor's not paying for your project. And uh, notably, we're offering uh, energy concierge service, which is really a call center, just like a hotel concierge, which is aimed at helping people through a, every step of the project from start to finish. Some folks might be savvy on energy projects, some folks not, might not be. There's a lot of rebates and alternative programs out there for folks. Um, so the energy concierge service is well used in Charlottetown. The phone's ringing off the hooks in, in, even today. Um, and the folks on, on the other end of the line are there to help residents um, get their project done successfully. And so, you know, th this is my photo of an energy concierge. Um, and, and really helping folks get, you know, I won't go through the whole list, but hoping fo helping folks get home energy assessments, finding out what projects for them, what type of contractor they should work with, which, which contractors are local and available for them to work with. You know, which programs are out there they can also access. We want to maximize the amount of rebates and incentives people are getting. And this is really working well for residents of Charlottetown and, and elsewhere. So this is a photo from a town hall session that we did in, in Stratford, actually. Um, but very similar uh, town hall sessions occurred in, in Charlottetown. And so the question is, you know, we're rallying up all these people around this program. Who has signed up? And so almost, you know, it seems like everyone is the answer. So not really everyone, but uh, you can see on the maps on the screen, those dots are all the participants of the program in each uh, city or town that's part of the SWITCH program. And I'll zoom in on Charlottetown. And you can see, you know, this is over the last 18 months since the program launched. Uh, and this is recent da data as of today or, or recent days. There's over 800 participants in the program. So 450 of those projects are already started, and those would be the uh, green dots on the screen, and 300 projects are already completed, and those would be the blue dots. So it, we're pretty pleased with the part participation. It's coming from every corner of the city. Um, it seems like it's quite equitable across all corners and, and all sorts of demographics participating in the program, which is great. And that was the, that it was the initial aim and continues to be the aim of the program, of course. So this means that People in Charlottetown alone have undertaken $6 million in energy upgrades and are saving $800,000 a year on the utility bills. That's real savings for real residents uh, of Charlottetown alone. Um, you know, equate that into greenhouse gases, that's over 1,200 tons in annual GHG uh, emissions reductions. And importantly, the uptake of the program is strong. So this is about, it's running about three or four times hotter than we expected it to be, <laughs> more participation. And, at the current rate that it's running, 
we're retrofitting three to five percent of homes in Charlottetown and the other cities per year, which is awesome when, when we think about sort of the path to net zero or the, to achieve the climate goals of the city. So what type of projects are being financed? I have a lot of information here, so I won't bore you with all the details, but I think it's interesting to see on the left of the screen shows you the heating system people started with, and on the right side of the screen is what type of project they pursue. Okay, so you see a lot of people on oil switching to heat pumps. They're electrifying their heating. That means that later on, maybe they can switch to solar and generate their own electricity to cover their heating costs, right, which is great. The folks that are already on electric that started on the electric, you know, the blue square on the left, um, their biggest project they're seeking is going after solar PV. They're already heating their home with electricity. Let's generate our own electricity. So there's whole, you, you sort of see where folks are, what types of projects folks are after in that diagram there. You know, over 50 local contractors involved here. Um, lots, of, lots of local contractors. It's not narrowed down to just one or two. Of course, there's a distribution on the screen. Um, but very, we're very pleased with the active participation in the program from contractors of all, all different types. And you can see by the different colors on the screen, the different types of projects they're doing. It's really spread out over heat pumps and solar, insulation, building envelope upgrades, the exact aim of the types of projects that we intended the program to finance in the first place. So. The switch program really works is what we're finding after the first 18 months of activity. Uh, and this is across both Charlottetown, Stratford, and Wolfville in Nova Scotia. And, and we're seeing the same thing in similar programs that we operate in the Maritimes. It's really offering equitable access to programming for residents. Um, of course, you know, homeowner savings are a key part of this, but also comfort in their homes. Uh, it's, we're, you know, we're achieving the GHG reductions, uh, helping towards the city's climate action goals. Um, you know, the, those 50 uh, contractors I showed in the last slide are really are a great example of sort of a, um, the local economic development opportunity here for the city, right, and for the contractors in the area. And of course, similar contractors working both on projects in, in Charlottetown and in Stratford in this case. Um, and this is really proving to be a sustainable program platform uh, where, you know, folks calling into the energy concierge service can really, it's sort of the backstop for all programs where you know, they're getting a real live person on the other end of the phone who can direct them towards the best program available to them. As we know, programs are coming and going in this space quite actively. Um, so it's, what we see this as is a very sustainable platform that can help people figure out what the best option is for them today, depending on what, what that is. So, um, you know, the overall budget uh, for the Charlottetown portion of the program, it, I'm going to say around $8 million, which really is, is comprised of funds from FCM and also other funds. Now, this is a little, little bit complex, but the overall capital budget is around $8 million and could extend to as much as $9 million. Uh, and you can see on the chart that's on the screen here, the green line is how much project funds are committed for home for homeowners out of that eight million dollars so you can see we're climbing you know at the end of december and likely more so now that we're into january around the six million dollar mark so my point we're 75 percent of the money's um allocated already right six million out of out of eight million um and that's exciting and that's great the program's running you know was intended to be around a three and a half year program. So it's running about twice as fast, um, you know, between two and three times as fast as, uh, as we expected as far as committing the capital goes. Um, so where do we stand? You know, there's a, you know, roughly $2 million remaining in funds to be allocated to residents in Charlottetown. Uh, that equates to about 150 projects. If we look at the average project cost being around 13 to $15,000. Now that's comprised of some you know, inexpensive, inexpensive heat pump projects and the solar projects are more expensive and the average ends up being around $15,000. And so what, what that's gonna mean as far as being able to continue to offer the program, at least as it is, is those funds will allow the program to operate for probably another four to six months is, is our estimate right now. But of course that depends on the uptake um, of the folks calling into the program and looking to participate, right? Um, so what, what are some next steps? You know, you know our recommendation or, or suggestion at least is to begin planning for a phase two of this program, a sustainable program. That might include things like a transition to a private capital uh, funding of the program rather than the this sort of Kickstarter phase has been publicly funded as the question was asked earlier. Um, it could also include things like enhancing the program design, which would mean things like 
the inclusion of uh, you know more specific uh, income qualified program elements it could mean things like integrating the program more cohesively with provincial programs or federal programs as we are hearing in the news that these programs are you know coming out of the woodwork so to speak um, uh, so you know transition to private capital enhancing the program design these are elements of what we would propose are, are important to consider uh, in the relaunch or the launch of a sustainable program or a phase two of the program once phase one is the funds are exhausted. Sorry. Is there not another further allocation that we could apply for similar to what Stratford got? So the short answer is yes. Um, so the, the funds came from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities um, Green Municipal Fund, which has a program, the Community Energy Financing Program, uh, CEF program. And so there was a $300 million budget for across Canada. Um, now, the Maritimes and PEI in particular had a pretty healthy allocation of that in the first place. And the and I just per participated in a session with um, FCM the other day where they're really trying to refocus the remaining funds to spread it out geographically across Canada. Um, so it's, it's a, you know, it is uh, a, a possibility that Charlottetown m might be able to apply for more funding from FCM. That would be unprecedented for, for uh, the same region to apply for money twice in the same program though and it's less likely knowing the fact that their aim for the remaining funds is to spread it out geographically and they also have some other criteria that they're looking to diversify the funds with with what 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 they have remaining so it's a it's a long shot if i could summarize all that it's a, that would be a long shot it doesn't mean we shouldn't try but it's so when you say from the same geographic area you're talking about strafford say again sorry when you say from the, it, it'd be unlikely to get a second allocation from the same geographic area. So you're talking about Stratford got an allocation already, so we probably would not get it. Um, yeah, that's correct. So, uh, so I should take back what I said. It's not unprecedented. Stratford got a relatively small proportion increase to the original loan amount. Um, Charlottetown is likely not eligible to apply for that yet because where Stratford applied would be like sort of they were nearing the exhaustion of their funds already. So it's a little bit further down the road. Uh, we're nearing that point now, but soon we might be at the point where we say to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, you know, the 80, 90% of the funds are exhausted. You know, is there a possibility to apply for a, an yeah, extension I, or a, an additional set of funds? I think it's worth a discussion because I think what's going on is the more people that get it done, apply for it, and the more the talk, and we Islanders talk a lot, <laughs> then the more more people will apply it. And I think that that graph's gonna start growing faster. Absolutely, uh, so that, and to, to be honest, I'm here with some of the other staff from Pace Atlantic uh, who are you know, helping to deliver the program. Um, and they're, you know, as you folks likely know, are holding a town hall session tonight to, yeah. to, to um, you know, answer questions from the community and inviting homeowners in all sorts of stages of participation, but also it's gonna generate some interest from new participants as well, I, I, I suspect. Can I just follow up, Mr. Yep. Chair? Yep. So yep. did you just yep. say that in Stratford, the, the meetings tonight? Is it Stratford, did you say? No, here in Charlottetown. So where, where is it going to be at? Uh, good question. Uh, You'll find I'm out. i have to follow up with you on okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Merchants and Center. Merchants and Center out on Kensington. Uh, thank you, Nick. Yeah. Merchants and Center. No, it's not going to be at the Florence uh, Simmons. It's at... Murchison, right. is it Nick? The name just escaped me, but that's correct. Murchison Center yeah. up uh, in behind Simmons. Yeah. So, so, Brennan, just last week, I think uh, CBC reported that Stratford did not expend uh, spend all their, their allocated funding. Is that correct? And can, could you clarify that? So the so Stratford had so the switch program itself apl uh, applied for and was awarded ten million dollars in capital for this yep. for the switch program the sort of phase one I would call it, um, and so you know 
roughly based on population, there was a there was a division of that those funds amongst Charlottetown, Stratford, and, and Wolfville. So Charlottetown was allocated the lion's share of that amount, and that's where the 7.2 number comes from um, that I referred to earlier. So Stratford got um, you know roughly two million dollars in their original allocation, but their uptake was so strong and they exhausted those so quickly. Um, or they were on track to exhaust them so quickly that um, FCM um, did work out uh, in additional funds for Stratford, uh, not, you know, 50% more of their original amount in, in that type of order, yeah. So just to follow what the chair asked or questioned, if the city's interest, the city of Charlottetown's interest in the program is growing uh, because the talk is getting around, the conversations are happening, and there is potential for us to apply for more of that FCM money. There is, yeah. I think, you know, um, it's probably likely soon that you're getting to the point where enough of the funds are used where FCM might consider a, a secondary application. But my comments earlier, I'll go back to, you know, they're just holding some workshops now to sharpen the focus of where they want to allocate the remaining funds and they're really focused on spreading it out geographically so that for, for those reasons I, I, I wouldn't want to set the expectation that it's likely that Charlottetown would receive more funds especially at zero percent from FCM but that doesn't mean we can't pursue that and so we'll, we'll absolutely follow up on that Mayor Brown yeah. because Mr. Chair when I declared conflict of interest Lori and I my wife and I did apply for the program but we're looking at Phases, we're doing the insulation first, then the windows, then the heat pumps, and then down the road, the solar panels. But I'm not going to spread it out over four or five years. But I think some homeowners are looking at the phase in because that's what you can afford yeah. with 0%. But Mr. Chair, I've heard that our pro this program is so popular that the province is looking at extending funding for homeowners across the island to more or less imitate the PACE program. Is that, is that what you've heard, Brennan? Yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. So there, you know, the finance PEI is offering a, a program focused on home heating, so a heat pump program. Uh, this is a very new program, so the details are, are not absolutely clear to us. Um, but this is when I was speaking on the previous slide to the importance of, of local programming is you know, the aim should, and I propose it should be, to, to integrate as best as possible with other programs that are available. And, you know, the power of the local program really is to provide a backstop for residents so that as programs come and go, um, there's always somewhere where they can call and figure out what the best deal is for them at that time. Like, for example, this PEI finance program, I believe that was the one you're referring to, Mayor Brown. Thank yes, you. sir. Um, you know, this is is termed as a pilot program for the time being. So the amount of funds available in that program are, are unknown, at least to me. It doesn't appear to be public information at this time. So, I, you know, is that program going to be a permanent program? Likely not. Time will tell. But, you know, this is, I think, again, the power of the local program is to folks have a, a, a local program that they can talk to that tells that can let them know what their best deal is on on that day uh, as we know there's a there's a federal program as well that the timeline of uh, how long that'll be open to residents of, of Canada is is unknown as well so okay thank you mr. Chair. so Brennan um, the provincial one is not through pace then they're doing it on their own that's correct yeah and I'm just wondering <clears throat> Nick do you know that the 5.7 or the close to 6 million is as of December? Has there been a lot of applications in January? Do you know? Who, who gets the applications, Nick, or you? You do. Okay, so it has been a, has been a ramp up in January? Uh, I wouldn't say a ramp up, but it's been steady. There's steady interest in Charlottetown. Uh, the comments in the room are, are exactly what, what we're seeing is that, you know, and, and we saw on the map there, it's, it's very... I don't know, contagious is a negative word, but it's, you know, the word of mouth seems to be strong um, and and the participation isn't slowing down by any means. It's, it's been quite steady. And again, we're, we're, in, we're in town here um, working with you folks to put on a, a town hall session tonight to um, 
to continue to answer homeowner questions and to generate interest and to strengthen the program. So, so when, we we don't say, when we say there's 3.5 million completed and, and we're, we're looking at 5.7 million, um, I take it that's in the hopper. And I'm kind of wondering, does that slow down during the winter months because it's not a good time to install windows or doors or heat pumps outside, or, or do they continue to do that anyway? No, no, just um, the, the time from a committed, so I think you're referring to this chart here, if I can, right here. So there's, there's always a gap, a time lag between when a project, a homeowner signs into a project, signs a contract, and the, the blue curve here, I didn't speak to earlier, my apologies, is representing those projects that are completed and paid. So, you know, for a heat pump project, it might be the case that there's a contractor with some free time and they sign an agreement and he can get that done quite, he or she can get that done quite quickly and turn around and get the project completed and that contractor paid all within a, a month's time. Might be, you know, something that might be average for a heat pump. But solar project requires a lot more work and, and permitting and, and, and working with the utility. And so those projects can take four or five months from the time a deal is signed till the project's actually live and that person's generating their own electricity and it's, it's completed and the contractor's paid. So, now, would that be considered yeah, so the, the green line is really the, the sum of all those folks who have signed a deal and the blue is those contractors have been paid out. So if the program stopped as it is right where the chart ends, well, the 5.7 is not going to grow anymore, but as Charlottetown pays out those contractors, the 3.5 million is going to continue to grow up and catch up, and then it'll, it'll, those will be those projects that are eventually paid out. It's just a little bit of lag, as you can see on the chart here. There's a two, three, four, sometimes five-month lag between a committed project and a completed one. That's a good question. So 5.7 is the projects that are committed. People have signed a deal, but of course there's people, participants in the program who have called. We have their name, we have their phone number and address, and they, they're, we're working with them to complete a deal, but they haven't got there yet. Um, you know, I would say there's quite a few people, but it's been a sort of steady. So it's, there, it, there's not a huge glut of people in that in that status that are just about to sign a deal, it's been quite steady. So I think what we see is in the growth of, of deals signed will continue to be consistent. Yeah. Mr. Chair, again, tonight, this evening, seven o'clock. What time's it started, Nick? Six o'clock at the Merchants and Center uh, off St. Peter's Road or St. Pius the 10th Avenue. Okay, thanks. That's great, thank you. Bobby, you got any questions? No, that's great. Thank you. Everybody else good? All good? Thank you very much Thank for you very giving much me for the coming chance in. to give an update. And great really to see everyone. That. Thank you. And whenever you get us more money, we'll shake our hand. <laughs> no, thanks, Brandon. Yeah. So if I could just get a motion to uh, move into closed session, it's per section 1191E of the Municipal Gover Government Act, the material still under consideration. Second. Second. Thank yeah. you, Bob. Thank you very much.
Ms. Jaren? Not yet. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I think we need to pass our motions from closed in open for the agreements. Okay. Just let it run through. All right, back into open session. We have three motions under the uh, transit transit contract. Um, I don't have a copy of it here, though, so I can't really read it out. Sorry. Remove the transit depot purchase to approve the transit depot purchase sale agreement to approve the Transit Coach Atlantic lease agreement and to approve the Transit Service Agreement. Okay. Move. Mover. Moved by the Mayor. Seconded by Bob Move, Durham. sir. Sure. Your father, your father and mother's doing well. <laughs>